Parents trust schools with their children, and schools should act to ensure student safety. Schools often engage in some forms of surveillance to reduce bullying, self-harm, or safety threats. Schools' responsibility to watch and protect students is not new. But technology now permits schools to monitor students both in and out of the classroom. Some schools are using technology to watch what students post on the school's internet or even on social media. These can be useful tools. However, they can also harm students if there are not appropriate safeguards in place to regulate and guide their use. Some of these technologies might seem like they are from the latest dystopian novel, but they're already being used in many schools. In the not-too-distant future, they may become more common depending on the choices we make today. Federal law requires that schools monitor students' online activities, but doesn't give specific guidance. Schools increasingly provide devices for students to use at school and at home. It is unclear when the monitoring should stop, especially when communities ask schools to prevent cyberbullying and self-harm and identify threats. This monitoring raises privacy concerns if there are not limits on who can see the information collected and how long schools can keep it. Surveillance can be a powerful way to identify when students need help. But for some students, it could make them feel like they can't express themselves and keep them from seeking help when they need it. Technology has made it easier to monitor students, but it has limitations. For example, social media monitoring can flag posts but may not always differentiate between slang and true threats, overwhelming administrators with false positives. As technology can be used to collect more data than ever before, it is important to ask who can access the information. For example, video surveillance can help law enforcement see what is happening in real time in an emergency. However, if schools give law enforcement access to video surveillance, that monitoring should be limited to crises. Schools should decide how long to keep data. No one wants a misunderstanding or mistake to follow a student around their whole life. School safety technologies only highlight risks. They can't solve the underlying problems. For example, if a student is identified as a potential threat, what happens? What rights do students and parents have to know why they were labeled a threat? If the school determines action is not needed, how long will the data be kept? Will it become a part of the student's education record? Schools should be a trusted place where every child can learn and grow. Research shows that surveillance can undermine that trust, creating a prison-like environment where students feel Big Brother is always watching. Students are still maturing and need to know schools are safe spaces where they can ask questions, think creatively, and make mistakes. School safety technologies should only be adopted for specific purposes. Simply saying we want to improve safety is too vague. Schools need a specific objective, like controlling who can enter the school or preventing cyberbullying and self-harm. And these goals might be better achieved without surveillance. After comparing benefits and risks, schools may decide that solutions like more school counselors or anonymous reporting apps are better for students. When creating school safety goals, schools should get feedback and buy-in from their community and collaborate to develop policies that surround their safety plan with student privacy. They should also provide ongoing training to every person who can access the data. Schools should set their own policies of whether and how to monitor students and protect school safety. But privacy guardrails must be drawn so students and parents can be reassured that their rights will be protected. Learn more at FERPASherpa.org.